Welcome to another NYCFC at home with the Cooligans presented by El Jimador. We're ex go. excited about today. <laughs> Obviously, a bit, you know, playoffs. De de <laughs> decision day, big win, playoffs I coming up. And guess who we got on the show today? We got the I coach, Ronnie Dyla, the gaffer. I still himself. don't believe it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Only the big stars come through NYCFC at home. All right. Have uh, they told him who we were? <laughs> they must have. Please do not tell him who we are before we talk to him. <laughs> no, I don't know how we got this approved. But thank you so much. Uh, so a lot to talk about today. Uh, so let's get to it. Let's take an inside look. Which, by the way, presented by Adidas. All right? Shouts to Adidas, yo. All right, let's take a look at the last match. The last match of the season, Decision Cor Day. That's right. Yeah, who sounds ominous? I boom, boom, boom. At, at Soldier <laughs> Field. What? <laughs> <laughs> and there are no fans. Uh, it was, I mean, what... Did they try to fit a season's <laughs> worth of highlights into one match? What happened? This game was pretty nuts, right? I mean, uh, I was I was watching uh, uh, this game. I was uh, I was actually walking nutmeg and like watching on my phone and i'm like how has this happened this too, <laughs> like, this is too much uh for if you one... get like a little bit of a hiccup on the internet service all of a sudden it's two goals you're like what happened <laughs> uh but pretty nuts obviously this game ends uh four to three uh but uh, you know we're not used to too many uh you know well i'm not gonna say like seven goal thrillers but we just we did have we just had yeah. one uh yeah. <laughs> but it was... we're not used to it in the last three days before the match <laughs> <laughs> it was more lopsided in our favor. Uh, I, I was I was a little bit concerned that we kept um, losing, you know, the lead. Uh, and and it, it took, you know, I luck, you know, luckily a, a mistake on Chicago Fires and uh, led to, you know, uh, Tati uh, putting that goal away. But it wasn't, yeah, a little a little concerning. But it was still. You can even see when Tati got the ball, he didn't even believe it. He's like, "Is this actually happening? <laughs> Have you guys paid attention to this match? This shouldn't be happening." This but is, yeah, I mean, the, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was gonna say like he's just reacting like this is wild. It's crazy. I got yeah. the ball right here. He passed it to the wrong guy. <laughs> Yo, thank you so much, dude. <laughs> That's really sweet of you. Uh, I think it just goes to show the quality of Chicago and where even a team that isn't, you know, uh, advancing, look at the quality that they have. Look at the players like Barrich who, who can put it, you know, put it in the net whenever you get a chance. And it just goes to show that NYCFC, you know, you, you don't just have to be good. You don't just have to find a way to win ugly. Sometimes you also got to be lucky. And yeah. it seems, I don't want to say this yet, <laughs> but it seems at least in that match, we were kind of lucky. Yeah. No, I mean, look, they were, uh, they, they played well overall. I mean, like you, you want, you know, you don't get those opportunities uh, uh, without the, the, the incredible de defensive pressure. Even Tati has been, uh, d defensively, he's been absolutely incredible uh, as well. well. He's always had that. He's always been able to stretch the field. He's always been able to put pressure on the defenders. He's always been able to make you worry as he gets near you. Not only that, now this year he's added the goals yeah. to it. I mean, he's always been able to score goals, but this year he seems unstoppable. Yeah. I mean, so much so that even defenders are giving him the ball saying, I got to just see, <laughs> I want to see but you do it. He's so I, good at and it. And it was up. He, I mean, he got named uh, MLS player of the month. Uh, so that's huge. We, 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 you know, we don't always see NYCFC get, uh, I think they're a little underappreciated from time to time. Well, I think. Uh, NYC... Say it. Speak your mind. We get snubbed. <laughs> Say it, Christian. I think that this is the, the this is the, the, when it comes to the, you know, the, how other t uh, fans and teams see NYCFC, I, I think they see us as a, uh, as a collective, not just one guy that is sort of uh, standing out. Uh, and the team is dangerous collectively as opposed to just one, focusing on one particular player. But so it was nice to see, uh, you know, w one player just be like, I, yo, no, I want, I want this, uh, you know, opportunity. I want this chance and, and to be able to shine. So that was great to see. Yeah. And Joe Tollison said it on this very show uh, that uh, NYCFC has gotten goals by committee. Well, Tati was like, uh, let me run for the head of this committee real quick. OK, <laughs> let me stick my head up above the rest. And I mean, one of the things that I love about it, because there's so many different people that can score goals and that have scored goals, is that when Tati Castellano shines, it doesn't become a everyone give the ball to Tati. That just means like, look how even more dangerous we are because yeah. everyone else still trying to get buckets. Exactly. Uh, so, no, it's just an, an impressive game uh, overall. 
overall. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, obviously we know who our, our opponent is going to be in uh, in the playoffs. It's going to be Orlando. We we thought it was uh, you know there was there was a lot at stake, right? Because if Columbus would have lost and we would have won, we could have had a home playoff game. Uh, right. They ended up winning. Uh, Nashville uh, scores two in the final five minutes to beat Orlando. So you know that that basically. So now we got to go to Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what, which I, I, I still like uh, our chances there. So I, I think there's a, a, you know, a lot of promise. And as far as teams uh, like who's kind of, who's playing better right now, it's, it's NYCFC, uh, you know, For sure. it, it, be, between the two. We've said it. MLS playoffs, you got to go in hot. Who's hotter than us? Exactly. Okay. Look at that. It's and like, then after us, it's NYCFC. Right, obviously, us <laughs> being the Cooligans. Correct. Then, yeah. It's, I feel who's hotter than us is like, oh, it should be a good <laughs> caption for a selfie. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right? we're really feeling ourselves right now. When you and I go to events and like a professional photographer is like, can we take a picture? What goes through both our heads is who's out of this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let them know. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. So you know what? Let's uh, let's hear from uh, Coach himself and really talk about how how we're gonna prepare uh, for this playoff game. So uh, right next up, we have Ronnie Dyla. All right, we are here with our esteemed guest. I honestly feel like maybe I should start doing push-ups or something in front of this guy. <laughs> to be completely honest yeah, with you. we can't show any weakness right now, okay? Ryan, it's playoff time, my dude. Uh, coach, uh, this coach came in, uh, you know, comes from uh, an esteemed background and has uh, done some amazing things here. Uh, and what a what a... What a first time in New York, huh? Running all the way to Orlando. He didn't even get to see our stadium until, what, two-thirds of the way into the season? We're so happy to have him on our show. Uh, I'm excited. Christian, are you excited? I'm absolutely thrilled, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, then, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Coach Ronnie Dyla. Ronnie, how's it going, Coach? Very good. And you? Looks good. Not we're, bad. We're great. Uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for doing this. I don't know if you've watched uh, any of the other uh, episodes. Uh, I know we did. We were on uh, one, <clears throat> one of the virtual fundraisers, so we did get to meet and and, and talk a little bit. Uh, and I know, yeah. Look, you you have a you have a serious job, and now you're talking to two stand-up comedians. <laughs> Hopefully, we we are not, you know, uh, diminishing or degrading the value of your position. But I want, <laughs> I just want to, I just sort of want to get to know you a, a little bit more, and and really just kind of. Uh, I mean, my first question to you is, what is? Uh, I mean, this. Exp I know you've talked about it a little bit, but your experience so far in New York. Uh, uh, obviously, it's been a, a strange year. Um, do you feel bad that you haven't really gotten to experience? The, the what the the city really has to offer but how are you feeling so far with your tenure here uh, we uh, me and my family we really enjoy being here it's uh, been um, of course a special year in many many things but um, you know we had a lot of time uh, being around in in new york we, we love to when i have a day off we we take the bicycle and Go where we live in Hoboken, so we take the bicycle down to the river and we take the boat over and then go around uh, in Manhattan. Has been uh, we've done that many times this year, and um, it's it's been been the, the city is unbelievable. It's unbelievable with the unbelievable good restaurants, good atmosphere. Um, I know it's not the normal atmosphere that it is when the the corona has not been there, but. Uh, even though it's been been good, and the weather is uh, is so good as well. It's like living in Spain, and we we know each and we <laughs> we travel to Spain when we want some heat, you know. But uh, we don't need to do that when you when you live here in uh, in New York. It's been from uh, first of uh, almost April to first of November has been really really good. So yeah, yeah. so we are happy with that. That's awesome, and you've you've had a, obviously a lot of opportunity to uh, stay with the team, right? Your first, you basically had like, you know, preseason, you guys all sometimes will go out to a different country or a resort and get a chance to bond. You had it twice, right? Because then you got to go to Orlando <laughs> and you got to bond as well. How, because one of the things, right, the first two matches of the, of the regular season, they didn't go so great. Costa Rica went amazing. Those two matches didn't go so great. And then you had this extended period off. And then the team that showed up in Orlando seemed like a completely different unit. It was so, everyone seemed like they were playing together and everyone kind of exactly knew where to go. And they seemed to have started Started to click there how did you as a coach find a way to get this team to click in a situation like what we saw in orlando which must have been difficult for everybody 
I think, you know, it, it's a transition all the time when you get a new coach in. And it's not only a new coach, it was a new staff also. A lot of a lot of the people around the team also, like uh, my assistant Nick and Efrain was new. You know, Medi has been here, but he, he will be more with the youth. So it's... Uh, and then in the beginning, uh, you know, we played, I think we played really good against Tigres at home. Uh, and it's also tough when you go Champions League and go straight into the into the league. Um, and there was two special games, especially the first one against Columbus when we get a red card after one minute. But I felt that, uh, you know, these two games that we we were too open defensively and we, we we didn't have the intensity that we need to have into the team. Um, and then, you know, we... And then you get new demands uh, that you're not uh, used to. Then it's also always going to be a little bit on security in the team, um, and um, and that you can see a little bit. Uh, especially, I was disappointed in the game up in Toronto because then we were, were not even close to to get anything with us, in my opinion. So, so we worked. Um, the boys really worked really good physically in the in the break. Um, they uh, they did everything they asked to do and and more so. And also, we we I get time to see the team uh, every game from last year, what they're good at, what they can be better in. And I felt like when we come into uh, the training again and started up in Orlando, that we we had uh, more unity and more togetherness in in how we want to do things. That they understand me and I understand them more. Um, and then we started to performed really good as well. We we didn't get the result in the beginning, but uh, I saw that we deserved to have more better result than we when than we than we did. Um, and then afterwards, uh, now the last games after we after the group stages in, in Orlando, we we played some really good football, I think. And I think um, players are improving all the time. Uh, I think we're clicking better and better, offensively and defensively. In the beginning, we were really good defensively. And didn't score so much goal, but we could, but we had a lot of chances, but we didn't take them. Now we still doesn't concede a lot of chances, but we concede a bit more goals. So we have to be take get that right. Uh, but we start to score a lot of goals, and uh, and we've scored 13 goals now in the last four games. That's um, that's uh, some stats we want to keep on uh, keep on doing. So. So I'm I'm really satisfied with the way the team is developing and and um, the way the players is working, and I think it's uh, it's just gonna go better and better. We we want to improve players more, want to improve the team, and uh, I'm sure also after the season into the next season we want to add some players as well, and then can be even even a wider and better quality squad. So so we we. Uh, we are looking very positive to to the rest of the season now uh, because four in a row now we want to keep on winning. Uh, we can beat everybody. We we know that, and um, and uh, it's going to be exciting now going into the playoff against Orlando. Yeah, it's been uh, I mean, without a doubt just uh, entertaining. The last the last few months have been incredible. I, I love that you are also becoming a um, you know a New York coach. You know what I mean? You you when it when it comes to your your interviews, your quotes, you are you are bringing that that uh, you know uh, you know whether it's dealing with criticism people and talking about whether when you want to take players out and when what you know what your philosophy is how has uh, how has that sort of developed uh in in your time here uh, were you always this uh sort of assertive and told people exactly how you felt or is this uh, something a new york thing where you have to deal with the new york media a little bit more so you push back a, l- a little bit how, how are you dealing with uh you know the the opinions and the, the criticism uh of, of some of your decisions And that's something I learned from uh, from uh, many years in this business. You know, you have to, you, you know, the media has, they want to get something out of the, the interviews, of course, and they, they have their opinions about things. But, you know, I have to get across what I believe in and, uh, and what I think is right or wrong. Um, so I get uh, sometimes a little bit upset when... Uh, when questions about things that I don't think is relevant or that uh, is not right, then I always I try to do it in a quite nice way. But uh, <laughs> I try to be quite clear in the way they have me in in that way. And I think um, media likes that as well. They like people that uh, say their opinion 
because it's so easy to be so politician and say everything uh, correct and uh, take care of everybody and everything's in nice. Uh, I think we need some uh, some people in in the in in the football that uh, that uh, have opinions and uh, and can get um, headlines in in the newspapers as well. And of course, it has to be something that can be related to us and to be us. And I think the values that we talk about in, in New York and the New York people is it's quite similar to what uh, things uh, I am, you know? So I think it's, fell, it's, it's coming very naturally for me to, to be honest and direct. And because I'm quite progressive as a person, I want to improve. I hate to, when things are standing still, is the worst thing I know. Um, and um, and uh, I'd like to work hard, you know, and, and at the same time also enjoy life. So to find that balance between things is, is important. Well, buddy, you fit right into New York. Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> you fit perfectly here. Uh, we're we're going to talk a little bit about the playoffs, but I do want to ask one question because I just want to get in the mind of a coach. What is it that you saw? Was it you or maybe it wasn't you? Was it What did you see in Anton Tinner home that made him go from – you know, a defender to one of the most potent attackers in MLS <laughs> where the other teams have to, we saw it in Toronto. You have to worry about, uh, you know, the right back or the left back, you know, like, yeah. What is it that you saw that made you think like, I think this guy could do as much up front as he's doing back there. Cause it's genius. I think I think uh, all, in my system, uh, always the fullback is very very important. You have to get them going up and down the, the side all the time and get overload on the sides because we play a lot in central, and when we have players like Maxim Morales uh, in central there, you have to get the ball in there. But when they are scared of him, they he closed the uh, they try to close the center of the pitch, and then when you get uh, double if you double uh, if you double up on the sides, then. We will get two with one on the uh, on the winger, and then it's about the relations, how the winger and the fullback, and also um, the number eight and number ten on the, that side, how they're working together to to open them up. Because in my system and how I think is about it starts from behind. You are two with one, three with two, and if you take advantage of that, you will also get three with one, two with one, three with two in the next next phase of the of the game. And Anton is really good. On the, he's, he has a really good understanding of the game, uh, and he has a uh, good um, running capacity. He can go up and down, and he's very, very good to position himself in the right positions. And when he gets into dangerous areas, he is good to talk and speak with the winger and the players around him. And then he gets put up in a good situation all the time. And uh, I'm so happy for him the way he play. And but he, he's a quality player, and he he will continue developing himself when he he start to keep on uh, try to get better and better um, cooperation with with the players around him so that's something if you can do yeah. that over all over the pitch it will be very very hard to to catch yeah, I mean, look, he, the, we see it from Matarita as well. I mean, the the, the yes. fullbacks have been absolutely uh, just stars, uh, the, especially the last uh, few months. And I love one thing I do love about Anton Tinnerholm is that he is. Uh, you almost don't expect that fiery, passionate sort of at like you would think he's Argentinian and not Scandinavian. You know what I mean? <laughs> like he plays, he's very vocal. He's talking to the other team. Uh, he talks to his own teammates, and you, you so you love to see that. Uh, uh, you know, I, I very much enjoy it. The um, I, let's also talk about the playoffs. Uh, uh, next match, obviously, uh, uh, is going to be uh, against uh, Orlando. Uh, wh what are you looking forward to as far as, you know, uh, it, it's an opponent you, you've definitely, you know, you've seen before a few times. Uh, is there anything that you're sort of focusing on? I know the, you know, I, I just saw your interview with Glenn Crooks and you were talking about Tati Castaneda. Uh, Tati Castellanos and his improvement and kind of developing his game and being, uh, a, you know, uh, that that number nine for for NYCFC. Uh, are there are there any particular things you you want to focus on uh, to prepare against Orlando? Yeah, it is. But uh, first of all, it's like uh, as I said to the players today that we're not going to do anything different from what we have done before. This what's have brought us here is going to bring us further. So it's uh, important that you know the the basics that we are working on every day. Are working for for many months now. That's the basics into this game uh, also. So try to get it as normal as possible. Possible, and we know that when you come to the game, it's a lot 
more atmosphere and, and energy into the game because it's, it's a one-off game and it's starting to get close now to really can fight for a trophy. So so that's um, that's important. And then, of course, in front of every game, we have a meeting or two that we talk about opponents and say, this is the opponents and then this is what they're good at and we have to stop and this is how we can break them down. And with uh, with Orlando, uh, I've watched, I've met them twice, and, and I watched yesterday. I saw three games of them, so I have a quite good uh, view of what they are. But it's important that the, we, as I said, focus most on, on ourselves, and that is very clear. And two, three things, not too many things. That uh, this is what we have to to do. But um, in general, I think we we showed a lot of positive things in down in Orlando when we were down there. Uh, we started very bad the first 20 minutes, but after that we took over the, the game totally, and and uh, we should have won in the end. And um, a lot of these things, what we did, did there, uh, I can't tell you too much about what that is, but, uh, but, uh, <laughs> but that's going to be important in the game now as well. Um, and also, uh, recently news came out about uh, Concacaf starting back up. Um, what do you oh, sort of? How do you feel about the team, the mood of the team going into something like the playoffs, and now thinking about this even bigger competition that's also not even bigger, but another big competition, I should say, that's also sort of right around the bend. Um, what do you think of the mood of the team going into this, and how exciting are you to be uh, sort of? In the in the in the running to be able to win multiple different competitions. I I think the the the, the mood is really good. Uh, yeah, if it's not good now, it will never be good. So it's like you know the opportunity behind <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. And, uh, you're winning a whole bunch of games. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you're scoring goals, goals every minute. Every minute. <laughs> yeah. so I'd be very very uh, scared if if uh, worried if uh, if we were not good mood now. But uh, it is a good mood. It's a good confidence of the group. It's important to be humble because um, you know if you think you are something, you you fall down quick from the from the throne. You know, we are, and we have never win anything, and we are we have to train and act as we are number two uh, all the time, and that's what we are. Uh, so we have to do everything right in training and outside training now to to make ourselves as ready as possible. Um, but I'm happy now that we're going to take the uh, meet Tigres again now instead of. In March, because I think I was not feeling comfortable going to the best teams like in Toronto and Columbus in in the beginning uh, with the way we played. Because I think we, as I said to you, we, we were not good enough defensively. And when you meet good good teams, you have to defend with the whole team. You can't have two three players and not just walking back. Then you get trouble. You don't see a team in the world who can win and do that. So so I think now. The intensity and our pressure and the reactions in the team when we lose the ball and to win it back, uh, the hard work and the, the organization, if that is in bottom, we know we have really, really good skills that can hurt them. So to come into these games now is going to be a big test for us, but, uh, but we have shown now with Toronto away for two weeks ago, go after Columbus, win there, uh, not to, sorry, to, to Chicago. And and you know and we showed in Orlando when we were down there that we we can we can really hurt them. So so the momentum we have now that something we want to want to use into into the Champions League and also into the playoffs. Yeah, look, I'm glad the the uh, Concacaf Champions League games are happening in December. Obviously, you know, all, all I can say is, you know, welcome to American soccer, Ronnie, where we play Champions League in the preseason, and you got to figure it out in your yeah. first year. It's a little bit uh, more challenging, but Do no, a lot this, more stretching. <laughs> <laughs> but this year, obviously, has been very challenging, and it, whether it's you know missing players, injuries, and you know a bear out for the season, and and seeing the team play as well as they have. And, and uh, obviously you have a, a, a huge uh, part in, in that as well. So it's, it's been awesome to not only get to know a little bit more about you, uh, but to see all the great work that you've been doing. So uh, Ronnie Dyla, thank you so much uh, for joining us today on NYCFC at home. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very nice to talk to you as well. And hopefully we can be very, very happy in a, right. in a month's time. All right, baby, let's do a little match preview presented by EA Sports. He's like, yo, who's next? 
Shouts to Ronnie Dyla for joining us. Thank you it so much. It was really him. It I was, was <laughs> expecting it to be one of the media people in a mask. I can't okay. believe the coach is actually on Take our Take off show. that mask, Brad Sims. We know it's you. <laughs> Come on, Brad. <laughs> no. Uh, so, yeah, shouts to Ronnie. Thank you so much for joining us. It, it absolute honor. Uh, let's uh, – oh, and also, I guess, a, a reminder, the, the, the playoff uh, game – November 21st at noon Eastern time. So uh, make sure uh, to watch and check that out. Uh, I'm excited to be back in the playoffs. One thing, another thing I did want to discuss. Uh, as, <laughs> I'm excited to be back in the playoffs. Like you're in it. <laughs> okay. I mean, look, I, I had just as much to do with it. <laughs> as, okay. As Ronnie. Okay. <laughs> hey, we provided the laughs, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> so the, uh, the one other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the MLS end of year awards. Uh, were were announced. Speaking uh, of getting snubbed, okay, and no NYCFC players uh, were uh, a part of the. Uh, they are they are not the finalists. No, uh, you know, as far as uh, possibly winning an award. And uh, coach, it's a- coach, print it out. Put it on the way out of the <laughs> onto the field. Correct. Okay. Let, Let them him know. <laughs> and, uh, and and full disclosure, this is a uh, exciting. Uh, we we announced this on our show uh, on on Fugo TV, but we are voters now. We got asked to vote, <laughs> and let me tell you something. I was so afraid to click on that link thinking it was that guy sitting on the edge of the bed. Like it was just a prank. If you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Rick rolled or whatever. Yeah. yeah no, I was like, yo, what do you mean? We get a chance to vote. Do you know who we are? You know, oh, this and must have no, been it a, was real. A mistake. Major league soccer.com. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was very real. Yeah. So we, I, we got, we got to vote uh, and, and honor as well. And, and yeah, you know, we mentioned who we voted for on our show. You can hear the kind of the full list, but we did, uh, as far at least at least defender of the year, Anton Tinnerholm. Anton Tinnerholm got right. our vo- our vote, our first place vote. Uh, because- oh no, I think I messed up. What'd you do? I, I voted for Antoine Tinnerholm. Oh, Damn. what an oversight! You know, God, that could be why it could have been that one vote. Weird, Alexis, because it was a drop down menu. I don't know how you did that. <laughs> I think if you if you go into the HTML, you can actually <laughs> write it in. Did you know? Wow, that? you really went, you know, to incredible lengths to make a mistake, which is wow. Like, I feel I, if there's ever been a title for my album, it's been that. Uh, <laughs> I think. Look, when you look at what Anton Tinnerholm has done yeah and like some of the players that did get chosen like uh mark mckenzie like incredible defenders but to find someone who's not only an incredible defender but the you know almost an offensive spark plug for your club yeah. Especially on a team where something like that is necessary. We just heard Coach explain the system. I still don't get it, but he explained it. And <laughs> okay. apparently it went, over, it went over our heads. We don't we're not smart enough to understand like, that stuff. <laughs> 3v2. I'm like, are we doing math equals X? I'm I don't know if it's going to be calculus today. <laughs> I got to be honest. I'm nervous. I can't find my TI-86. <laughs> uh, all right. But, but obviously, Tinder Home is wildly important, and he's played incredibly well to the point, to the same point I made, where teams have to prepare for him. So, I, look, I don't know how he doesn't make it, but you know what? You won in our hearts, which exactly. is even more, exactly. even though. Right, my heart is there. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> you won our hearts. Yeah, no, it, no. They say a man's heart is in his stomach. Uh, don't Yo, they say I that? know mine is. <laughs> yeah. So both Anton and Antoine Tinner home win the twins. Uh, that's right, because we all know uh, what it says on my shirt. Uh, yes, yeah, so, he good at soccer, baby. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, ho- hopefully next year we'll we'll end up uh, with some awards, but we're hoping we end up uh, this year with an MLS cup. Uh, so that's the award that everybody wants. Forget exactly. the individual awards. Go lift that cup. baby. Exactly. So a lot to look forward to everybody. So uh, thank you again for tuning in to another episode of NYC, NYCFC at home with the Cooligans presented by El Jimador. 